Let's build a home for every single career in The Sims 4, but the budget for the home will be the real life annual salary of that career. Part three. I am part of the EA Creator Network, so some packs were gifted to me and some packs I've purchased myself. We are back with our career build series, an original series on my channel. I will link the playlist down below if you guys wanna check out the other two episodes thus far. But today we're gonna to be building a house for a vet, which was very highly requested in the comment section of my last video. So as per usual, please don't forget to comment down below which Sims career we should build for next. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you are enjoying this series and you wanna see me continue it. But today we're gonna to be exploring the veterinarian career, which comes with the Cats and Dogs expansion pack. It isn't like a traditional career in The Sims 4, which has a clear, distinct career path and promotion schedule. It's an active career in which you get started by purchasing a vet clinic. When you go to work, you have to actually go to that lot and open the clinic. You have to hire employees, kind of like owning a retail store with Get to Work. In the game, there are various pieces of equipment that will help you treat the animals and thus level up your vet skill, which we will no doubt be including in this home. And since there's no Sims 4 wage we can compare this to, let's just get right on into finding out how much a vet makes in real life. Okay, a quick Google search says that vets on average make $123,688. Now that is a very healthy sum of cash. I mean, it makes sense. They are doctors, basically. It's also more than three times the budget we had in our last episode. So this is going to be really interesting to compare and contrast the two houses. Also, in case you're wondering, we did do teacher in our last episode episode. Now, if you ask me, this salary is honestly what a teacher should be making. And that is not to discredit vets in any shape or form. That is just all praise to teachers. But with that being said, let's get started. Okay, here we are in Brindleton Bay on this nice big lot. The budget has been set. I'm very curious to see what type of home we can build with this large of a budget. This is the first time in this series that we've actually had a super large budget to work with. As per usual, I will pop my reference photo up on the screen right now. I really wanna create that like classic Cape Cod silhouette, especially with the like five point roof pieces that are really characteristic to Brindleton Bay homes. If we just grab some half gabled roof pieces on the side like so, we should be able to recreate it pretty easily. Okay, that's already off to a pretty good start. <laughs> I'm doing the roofing first just because I wanna make sure I get the proportions correct. We have this little bump out over here and then a larger piece that basically cuts through this entire section. This looks kind of silly, but I think we're on the right track. You just gotta trust the process, you guys. What can I say? This is like a garage area, which is kind of nice. I might put like a little, little vet station in here or something. And one final connecting gabled piece in the center here. And that should be the main roof all done, I think. Oh wait, I forgot about all the half gabled roof pieces along the front. Wow, this is probably one of our more challenging roof jobs in a long time, wouldn't you guys say? I feel like it's been a while since I've been like genuinely challenged doing a roof in a way. Weird flex, but okay, Ashley. <laughs> I'm going into this build with a completely different outlook. Like I'm really not thinking about the money at all. Like I'm not stressed one bit. I guess The Sims kind of reflects real life in that way. You know, you have more money, you don't stress as much. <laughs> but here is the basic shell of the home. I think it's pretty accurate to the photograph in terms of proportions. I had something kind of specific in mind for the windows. It was this particular one from the Growing Together expansion pack. I think it matches the photo pretty accurately with the like white paneling that goes floor to ceiling. I guess if we wanted to, we could also use the cats and dogs windows, but these ones are kind of newer, so maybe it's more fun. <laughs> I think in the photograph, the door is actually navy, so this one from Growing Together would work. How do we honestly feel about mixing and matching windows? Like if I've already gone in with Growing Together windows, am I allowed to mix and match cats and dogs windows as well, or is that a big no-no? Let's make a little garage here with some of these base game windows using these get together columns just to anchor the sides. And then these thick columns from the base game just to line our porch. No detail will go unnoticed. We're gonna use these cats and dogs spandrels. Um, yeah, I kind of forgot about the back to be honest, but I think I'm gonna go in with some sort of like large patio space. Oddly enough, we actually don't have as large of a backyard as I thought we would have. Like this property looked so big in the beginning, but now that there's a huge structure on it, it's actually, it actually could have been bigger, but I think it'll be fine. Like we'll survive. We'll do an entrance up here like so, and then also something right beneath it. What if I told you that this entire shell, including the windows, 
only costs like 20k? If I remember correctly, we started with like approximately 123,000 and we're only at 103. So this is a pretty nice shell for only 20,000 simoleons. Like this is basically a starter home. Like you could live in this completely plain with drywall and nothing inside for only 20k. Like sign me up. But with that being said, I think it's time we get serious and start putting on all of our finishing touches on this exterior. For the wall shingles, if we want to be accurate to the photo, we technically should use this like light gray color from the cats and dogs pack. And then for the bump outs, we'll use like a plain pure white concrete. I need a darker roof color. This is like not doing it for me. <laughs> I feel as though I am longing for some more contrast, like the whole build just feels a little gray to me. So I'm gonna try and change up the windows. Maybe let's grab the horse ranch windows instead since they do match our door. Even the white ones are better actually because it has like the black interior lines. <laughs> I keep forgetting what the name of those lines on the inside of windows are. Now, basically, I'm just going to go in with a bunch of landscaping. We basically have this nice row of hedges, and it creates this nice rounded driveway. I don't know how many opportunities we're going to have in this series to go all out like this, so I think we should take advantage. And in order for it to look seamless, I have to overlap them ever so slightly. So I did press the F5 key ahead of time so that quarter tile placement is activated. Doing the curved bit isn't turning out as graceful as I had hoped. <laughs> this is honestly why I hate landscaping, you guys. This is so <laughs> tedious. Maybe I should have just done like a curved hedge fence instead because you can do fences on curved walls, can't you? Oh gosh, not me like just realizing this, but it's, it's kind of too late, huh? <laughs> How many times do I have to remind you guys that I am lazy? I think the problem isn't that I'm lazy. The problem is I'm a perfectionist. So I can't do this and like do it sloppily. I need to make sure like every single piece is placed correctly. So honestly, it's just a nightmare all around. Okay, for my own sanity, I am stopping here. This is as good as it's gonna get. I am fully aware that this semicircle is not perfect, but I think if we fill it with some some landscaping and stuff, you won't even be able to tell, okay? Of course, we'll have the luscious green grass on the inner part of this semicircle. This family makes $120,000 a year, okay? They can afford a really good gardener. These round bushes are always very luxurious looking to me because you know a gardener has to like come in every month and like completely trim them and make them perfectly round. A lot of you guys said in my last episode that the landscaping should not be included as part of the budget and it should be free. What do you guys think of that idea? On the one hand, I do kind of get where you're coming from. Like, why would you have to pay for trees that are like already growing on the lot? But at the same time, the whole premise of this series is seeing what your real life salary can get you in The Sims 4. And in The Sims 4, as we know, you do have to pay for landscaping and trees and everything, including rocks. I think one thing we do need to consider is landscaping does make a home look a lot better. So if we just make landscaping completely free, I'll be able to make my low budget homes really nice. I think it's almost more fun when you can compare like a really nice house like this where I get to splurge on landscaping versus a like lower budget home where I have to be kind of cheap with the landscaping. Let's put a little tree in the middle here. I imagine they had this one like custom planted so obviously it would cost a lot of money, you know? On the back, I'm just gonna take this hedge and kind of line this porch area. I'm sure you guys are sick of seeing this item by now. I know I am. <laughs> For the rest of the landscaping, I'm honestly just just gonna use these regular hedges. Like I cannot be bothered to individually place the other ones. I already told you guys I'm lazy, okay? Just, you have to believe me. Let's finish off with these pretty planter boxes. These are just from the base game. And we can't forget to go in with our exterior lighting. These lights are just from the Cottage Living Expansion Pack. These are definitely some of my favorite lanterns in the game. Ever since we got these, these have become like my default in a lot of cases. Also, I forgot to mention, but the reason why this wall is blank out here is because I wanted to include an outdoor fireplace. Maybe like this one from Cottage Living is kind of cute. Don't forget the finishing touches like an outdoor bin and also the house number sign that we got with the Love Struck expansion pack. This is definitely like my favorite new item to add to my builds. <laughs> and there you have it. Here is our finished
finished exterior for our vet's home with a starting budget of around 123,000 simoleons. So we have around 86,000 simoleons left, which means we spent around 36, 37,000 simoleons on the exterior and all of this landscaping. Like I said, I really was not looking at the budget when I was making this home, so I honestly don't know if I went overboard or not. We're gonna have to face the consequences of that when we go on to the interior. Okay, but we're in this together, you guys. So before we move on, you guys have to comment down below right now if you think I spent too much on the exterior. Is $86,000 gonna be enough for the interior? Am I gonna have a meltdown? Yes or no? Because if I'm in the wrong, you guys have to be in the wrong as well. I'm not taking full accountability for this. It has to be shared. Okay, I'm doing the interior floor plan and look what happens when I try and spread this wood floor everywhere. It costs 4,000 simoleons. Are you kidding me? And then look, if I go upstairs, 2,500 simoleons. I've literally spent $6,500 on just the flooring. Holy moly, I'm getting kind of worried. Let's do the upstairs floor plan first. So I think we can include at least three bedrooms. Okay, so this is what we're gonna be working with for our upstairs. Over here, we have two kids' bedrooms and a bathroom. And then on the right side, we'll have the primary bedroom with an ensuite. We can maybe do like a little reading section here and you can like play at the top of the stairs. But now onto the downstairs. The downstairs floor plan was kind of tricky because I didn't want to draw too many walls because too many walls cost a lot of money. I think I found a good balance. Over here is gonna be the living room. This is gonna be some sort of office or flex room. I want this family to have a lot of pets, so I figured this was a good area for the pets to like kind of run around and have all of their toys. This is just gonna be a small powder room. This huge area is gonna be our kitchen, our formal dining room, and then this will be our like little vet station with some of the vet equipment. Obviously, if you are a vet, you have to go off-site to another lot, but I figured this Sim still wants to like practice their vet skills at home and maybe they foster a lot of animals so they still have to have like an at-home station to like take care of them and stuff. So with that we have 73,000 simoleons to do the entire interior. That's approximately 36,000 simoleons per floor which should be fine. Honestly, I don't I don't really know like I think we should be okay But I could also be like completely in over my head So I'm gonna tread lightly as I place down a $2,500 fridge my bad as we may have learned from the last episode I am the world's worst budgeter. Let's be bougie, but not too bougie. Okay. <laughs> okay. I've already spent 10k on the kitchen um Yeah, so <laughs> This is not going well <laughs> This is actually crazy. I started with 120,000 simoleons. How did I, how did I mess this up? The thing is, it's also a lot easier to be super conservative with money right off the bat than run out of money, then have to like go in and delete things and make changes after the fact. Because by then you're already like attached to the items that you place down and you like already like it. You know what? Let's just go for minimalism, okay? The thing about these large luxurious homes is they're always like not super cluttered. They're very like sleek and minimalist. So I have a feeling I'm gonna be channeling a lot of that today. <laughs> Going in with just our kitchen essentials like the cooking utensils and a fruit bowl. Thoughts on this growing together tile for our backsplash? The navy swatch does match better. I don't know if that's like too matchy matchy or not. Oh, whatever. Let's just go with it. It looks pretty good. And we do need a painting on this wall. I don't even need to say it, you guys. Just cut to the next scene. We don't even need to see me placing it down. Let's get a large plant in the corner here. Maybe just a few treats on the counter. Let's put some of this extra dog food up on top of the fridge here. And here's our large luxurious kitchen all done. I didn't even clutter it up that much, you guys. And I am confident that I spent too much money in here. So I... I really don't know what I'm gonna do. I have less than 20,000 simoleons to do the entire rest of the downstairs. So I've really, I've really put myself in a bad place. I'm kind of hoping that it will just like even out in the end. Um, yeah, it's kind of like future Ashley's problem. You know what I mean? For some reason, I just feel confident that we'll be able to save money somewhere along the way. I don't know if I'm confident or just very hopeful. For some reason, I feel like there's a lot of people that are just like super triggered right now. Like, why are you being so reckless with the budget? I honestly don't know what to tell you. I just feel like you have to live life on the edge sometimes, you know? 
You guys have to stop worrying, okay? You're stressing me out. It'll all work out in the end, okay? Trust the process. Where would this channel be if you guys didn't trust the process every once in a while, you know? You guys just sit back and relax, okay? I'm, I'm gonna take care of things over here. Let's grab this pretty overhead light from Cottage Living in this bronzy color to match the curtain rod. Let's throw down this modern plant in the corner here. And that is all we need to finish off our cozy dining room in this home. It's not necessarily anything like spectacular, but I think if you look at it in the context of the kitchen, it does look like a nice, cozy, inviting space that contrasts nicely against this like vast open concept kitchen. At the end of the day, it's not about the individual rooms, it's about the build as a whole. So I think I still have hope that this is gonna turn out okay. Let's now work on the living room. Let's start off by going in with a fireplace. This one is from the Groin Together Pack. I feel as though it would be wise for me to set a budget it before I finish the room. So why don't we say at 55,000 simoleons, that's where I'm cutting things off. And once again, here comes the TV to completely blow the budget. Nice $2,500 TV, okay. I don't even know why I bother to try and set a budget. We all know I'm just gonna go over it. <laughs> I overlapped these two couches to create a sectional couch. And now I'm just gonna cover up this little clipping with a pillow. I'm just raising it up using the control nine key. For the coffee table, I like this large square one from the Parenthood Pack, especially since we do have some kids living here. And just this wooden end table from the Horse Ranch Pack to add a little bit of a rustic vibe. Can we make this cats and dogs armchair work? Sometimes it looks good in like the right circumstances, if you know what I mean. Okay, everything looks extremely plain, which is okay, because I think I wanna go in with a darker wall color. These ones from Cottage Living, I'm kind of obsessed with. Like, doesn't this look kind of cute? It gives it a little bit of like old fashioned character too, don't you think? Is it just me or would a grand piano fit perfectly in this corner? I know we are kind of on a budget, but technically, technically we can afford it. Who knows whether or not I will regret that later, but at the moment it feels pretty worth it to me. We don't really have much budget left to work with, so I think in this corner I'm just gonna do like some picture frames and some decor on this table. Oh, this is perfect because this one has a bunch of animals on it and this house is for a vet. So it's worth, it's worth the splurge. <laughs> Actually, let's put a little pet bed in the corner here as well, since a lot of animals will be living here and it's only 35 simoleons, so it's fine. We did go 200 simoleons over budget, but here is our grand living room all done. I think we did pretty well considering how large the space is. We managed to fill it out a lot and it looks really cozy and expensive looking. So I would call this room a success. Okay, let's go back over to this side of the house so we can do our vet area. I want to get this area out of the way to make sure I have enough money for all of the items I want. It's basically just gonna be a at-home vet clinic, so it's not gonna necessarily be like the prettiest room. And with these items, it looks like there's a cheaper version and a more expensive, less rundown version. So I think I'm gonna use the cheaper ones for now. And if I have more money at the end, I'm gonna upgrade these things. Like these will be the first things to be upgraded. Let's include these little puppy x-rays. These are so cute. And our exam table can go up against the window, I guess. Let's not forget our supplies cart as well. And then maybe just a few of these various pet crates. Let's go in with some of these dogs and cat posters. Thank goodness I finally have a use for these posters. I literally never use them. <laughs> okay, this room is mainly for function rather than aesthetics. So I'm just gonna go in with a bunch of, you know, cats and dogs clutter and call it a day. I'm just gonna finish off by including their diploma on the wall, you know, their medical school diploma or whatever it is and I think this is gonna be it for our built-in vet clinic. I'm really happy we were able to include this and can I just say we came in very very much under budget. I didn't really set a budget for this room but I can tell that we didn't really spend that much at all. Let's do this powder room really quickly. I don't think it will be very expensive because we're not including a shower. Um yeah this sink did cost quite a bit of money but this is the guest bathroom. So this is the bathroom that all of your friends are gonna see. So you wanna impress them, right? It's worth the splurge. If there's one thing you need to know about me, it's I will always find a justification to splurge. Okay, moving on from the bathroom, let's do the common area. Like I said, this is gonna be for all of the pet amenities. 
I want the cat jungle gym in here. I want these little hoop things too. I know they're supposed to go outdoors, but I mean, we have the space indoors. We might as well use it, right? Genuinely considering fencing off an area here for the animals to play in? Like what if I just do a little toddler stuff pack fence moment? I mean, we could also use the matching fence to be fair. <laughs> Move this door onto this side. It's just like a baby playpen, but for pets instead. I just want to include all of the stuff like completely spoil all of these animals. Oh, this tunnel would have been so good, but it's it's way too big. We we have to draw the line somewhere. We can do a little cat tree forest back here for them. Would it be going a little too far to include like grass in this little section? <laughs> Imagine it's just like fake turf or something. It's like a carpet. If I include these toddler stuff pack string lights, am I going too far? I think it's kind of sweet how much this family clearly loves their animals. <laughs> All that and we're still looking pretty good on the budget, don't you think? I'm just gonna put a quick doormat in the front and then let's do our final room. Okay, I don't wanna brag, but we are looking pretty good budget-wise. Don't you guys just feel so silly now? You were stressing out about it earlier. I told you. I told you it would be fine. I always have a plan. I'm always, I'm always thinking. As you can see, we're doing a little bit of a home gym moment, which is such a great luxury. Okay, this room is mainly items from the fitness stuff pack. The yoga mats are from spa day, and this wallpaper is actually from the bowling pack. And I think that's gonna be it for our basic home gym. I don't wanna clutter it up too much because the Sims need to be able to like walk around and actually use the equipment. So with that being said, that's gonna be it for our first floor. We have 42,000 simoleons going into our upstairs which is more than I had budgeted for, I'm pretty sure. So we did actually come in slightly under budget, which is very surprising because it wasn't, it, it wasn't looking good. I'm gonna be honest, I was getting a little bit worried, but I'm pretty happy with how it's turning out. It definitely feels like, you know, a vet or a, an animal lover lives here for sure. Okay, before we move on with the upstairs, I think I'm just gonna go in quickly and do all of the bathrooms. You guys know how it is. I just wanna get them out of the way so I can figure out how much money I truly have to work with. And we are lucky to be able to include this soaker tub in the parents' bathroom. In fact, we can include a walk-in shower and a tub as well. You guys taught me a cool trick with this sliding door object from the Love Struck pack. You said to use a half wall instead so that you don't get that like awkward Okay, here is the parents' bathroom all done. I just added this walk-in shower with the Moschino dividers as my shower doors. And then this clutter piece here is from the bathroom clutter kit. Now I'm gonna quickly repeat the same thing for the kids' bathroom and I'll be right back. Okay, here's the kids' bathroom all done. It's pretty similar to the parents' bedroom. I just gave them a shower tub combo instead. And I also ended up putting the like cat litter box in the bathroom. Now, to be honest, I don't have any pets, so I have no idea if it's normal or not to put your pet toilet in the same place as the human toilet, or do you usually put it like somewhere else? Um, let me let me know down below, I guess. I have talked about it in the past, but basically I've only ever had fish before, so please forgive me if this house is wildly inaccurate to what a real pet owner's house would look like. So we have just under 35,000 simoleons left, so I think for the sake of budgeting, I'm going to do 5,000 for each kid's bedroom, 10,000 for the parent's bedroom, which should hypothetically leave me with approximately 15,000 simoleons to do all of the finishing touches, laying off this pink and black watch here. I'm gonna try and do a pink and black themed bedroom. Maybe this cow print rug from the pastel pop kit to go with our animal theme. With the light pink end tables also from the pastel pop kit. I don't know what has gotten into me but I'm kind of feeling this like plaid pink wallpaper for some reason. This wallpaper is not something I would usually go for at all but for some reason, I'm feeling it. I, I don't really know why. Also, if you're new to my channel, I used to be like deathly afraid of color. Like I would only put neutrals in my build for whatever reason. And to be fair, I am still 100% a neutral girly through and through, but I've really been loving color. I love this little kitten mirror. It's perfect for kids' rooms. And it looks like we will have room to put a small desk area in this nook. Maybe this black one from the pastel pop kit. Again, going for that animal print 
point whenever we can. And let's not forget that this family is rich. So we're giving the kids some tablets or laptops or whatever this is. These kids get to be spoiled. They get all the goodies. We have 600 simoleons left. Let's go in with a full length mirror and also some curtains over their bed. And then just some flowers and plants to liven up their room. We went slightly over budget for this bedroom, but honestly, nothing crazy. Here is our first kid's bedroom all done, inspired by this pink and black hamster cage. If I were a kid, I would totally live in that one. Now on to our second bedroom. I'm thinking of making this one into a bunk bedroom just so we can fit some more kids in here. This one is super cute. It has the dinosaurs on it, so I might make this room dinosaur themed. We actually do have a dinosaur themed wallpaper in the base game, which could be cute. Let's put another pet bed in here. Maybe they like to hang out with their dogs in their room. This kid friendly desk from the Growing Together pack, which kind of matches their bed frame. Oh, and this dollhouse from the Horse Ranch pack that kind of looks like a barn that's perfect for animal lovers. This outdoorsy end table from the Little Campers kit matches our outdoor vibe. And of course, a big stuffed animal from the Cats and Dogs pack. If we size up the city living fluffy rug in this green color, it kind of looks like grass, which does blend in with our wallpaper. Okay, I rearranged the room a little bit because I forgot about a dresser. I don't really know if I'm gonna be able to fit one, maybe like right next to the bed here. It's not necessarily an ideal placement, but I think I think it'll work. Let's finish off with some curtains from the cats and dogs pack. And I think that's pretty good for our second kid's bedroom for two kids. I really love how both of these kids' bedrooms are so different, but both have a slight animal theme to them. But let me know what you guys think of them. Moving on to the parents' bedroom. I think it's safe to say that we can splurge on my favorite bed in the entire game, AKA this city living canopy bed. I am not joking when I say this is my favorite bed of all time. If there is ever an opportunity for me to use this bed, I always will. Let's put a TV in the parents' bedroom. We'll just size it up with our right square bracket key. Maybe put this cozy armchair over here to cover up whatever is happening with the pole right here through the floor. Going in with lots of plants and greenery in this room. And of course, some more pet beds. You know, every single room has to have a pet that sleeps in it. This big one is kind of large. Maybe I'll put it out in the hallway instead and go in with a smaller one. For those of you who have pets, do you your pets actually sleep on the little pet beds or do they just sleep like in their crate or at the end of your bed or something like where do they where do they actually sleep and do they sleep in the same place every night or do they just sleep wherever they want in the house? I know that some pets really love being in their crate. I think that's like dogs, right? Some dogs are like crate trained or something and they prefer to be in there. But I'm assuming that's not like a universal pet thing because a lot of my friends have cats and they say their cats sleep like on their face. <laughs> I unfortunately can't have cats because I'm very allergic to them. I will quite literally like scratch my eyeballs off if I'm near cats. I also have eczema or eczema, so it affects my skin too, and I'll just like scratch my whole body off too. <laughs> it's just really bad, it's a big struggle. <laughs> And here's our luxurious primary bedroom suite, all done. It's very neutral, definitely very like classic Dr. Ashley where I'm kind of afraid of color. So I don't hate it. I think we were quite adventurous with the kids' bedrooms. So with that, we have a healthy 12,000 simoleons or just under 12,000 simoleons to completely finish this house. So let's do a quick outdoor seating moment right here just with the perfect patio stuff pack. I think in my first episode, I accidentally called this the outdoor or backyard stuff pack or something, but I think I think this is the perfect patio stuff pack, right? <laughs> okay, just a couple of seats. That'll do. That'll do, donkey. Okay, what's next? Maybe an outdoor eating area? I mean, this house is so big. They have so many rooms already. It's not like any of this space is actually gonna get used, but you know, these people are rich, so more is more. Let's be real, when you're rich, it's not about using the amenities, it's about having the option to use the amenities, you know what I mean? There's comfort in knowing that you have the option and that's, that's totally fine, I guess. Moving on upstairs to the patio connected to the parents' bedroom. Oh, you know what else could be cool? We can get some more like animal related items, like ones that belong outside, such as, I can't think of it off the top of my head, but it's coming to me, such as this, the Mighty Mighty Home Insect Farm. I believe this belongs outdoors, wouldn't you say? It definitely doesn't belong indoors, I can tell you that. Let's give them this bee box too. I don't know, just give them all the animal related items. This person is a vet. 
they might want to rescue the the bees as well. I don't I don't know. My YouTube channel is not an educational channel, okay? It's not like National Geographic or anything like that. It's a gaming channel, okay? You can't expect anything to be factually correct on my channel here. I'm honestly just trying to have fun. I have no idea what I'm doing. Okay, we have lots of room for activities up here. Maybe we can create a reading nook and maybe some bookshelves along the back. And by reading nook, I mean just toss in a few sectional couches back there and a bookshelf. It really is as simple as that, huh? Okay, I think that's pretty much it for the upstairs. There's nothing else I really want to add. I did say that I would upgrade these vet appliances if I had more money, so we can finally do that. This is a very well-deserved upgrade because the new ones definitely look way better. Oh no, I'm literally 103 simoleons short on affording the brand new table, so I need to delete something. I guess I can delete like a plant here or something that's like... 25 simoleons that's still not enough okay let's delete one more plant it's always the plants that are the first to go 2500 on the dot we should be good now here we go nice and brand new that is 2500 simoleons and we have two simoleons to spare oh my gosh you guys that was such a long one but here we are finally finished with our vet's home a three bedroom two and a half bathroom mansion in brindleton bay you Using a real life budget of 123,000. 680 simoleons i believe it was this home is absolutely massive it has like all of the amenities you could possibly need especially if you are a pet lover or an animal lover i don't know what state or part of the world you need to live in to afford this large of a home with 123 thousand dollars a year i mean obviously that's a ton of money for an annual salary but i still don't think you'd be able to afford like a huge mansion like this in most cities, especially like big cities. I live in Canada and with this salary, you could probably get yourself a, a nice two bedroom apartment, to be honest. If you guys enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, especially if you wanna see more videos like this and comment down below what career we should do next. Also, if you're one of the people that had doubts that I was gonna run out of money, I think you owe me a like as well. And a subscribe if you haven't already. I appreciate your guys' love and support so much. I haven't had a series blow up like this in a really long time. So if you want to support me even further, please don't forget that I do have an EA creator code. It's Dr. Ashley, which you can use at checkout on thesims.com and the EA app. With that code, 5% of your purchase will be taken away from EA and shared with me instead. But I loved hanging out with you guys. I can't wait to see you guys next week. And as usual, I hope you guys all have a very, very, very above average day. Love you.